This is a canvas. This is um, a long canvas. What do you call it? Horizontal. And what you can see me doing here is I've sketched it already. It's taken quite a lot of time to sketch it out to get it right compositionally. And what I'm doing is I'm dropping quick sort of wireframe um, black line on it. Uh, just as a guider, really. Just as a guider so I can begin to lay some paint down. So I'm laying paint down now. Um, you probably notice as I lay this paint down that you might be able to see a bit of pencil line through it. I don't really care very much. I don't much care. Um, sometimes I'll go over pencil line. If it's a smaller piece, I'll go over and over pencil line. This, I might go over a couple. Uh, you can see on that gun, there's a, there's a bit, of, bit of pencil line showing through, a bit of black line and everything. I'll probably go over that. But other than that, I don't really care. And there's a reason for that is because when I start pulling uh, the objects into the foreground, you won't notice most of that anyway. You won't notice any of the pencil lines in the background. You can see on this building that I'm doing now, um, that I was doing a second ago, um, that I'm going to go back to in a in a second here, uh, there's a lot of pencil uh, around there. But when, when I bring that <coughs> gun into the foreground, you'll really notice that what I'm talking about is you just you don't really notice anymore. You don't really care very much. Uh, so what am I doing here? So what I'm doing, I'm doing it piece by piece, as you can see. Normally on a piece, I would prefer to um, lay down all the paint before I start getting an outline on and all that sort of thing. You can't really do it on something this size. You've got to get outlines on so you know what you're doing, you know where everything is. So you can see I'm, I'm getting lines in as quickly as possible, really. Uh, even when I haven't necessarily got all the uh, all the shading or the texture in, I want to get I want to get lines in as quickly as I possibly can. Also, because I'm using mixed media on this, I'm using pencils as well, using high quality uh, wax pencil, uh, Karen Dash for those interested. Uh, so. Um, that's I want that to be the last thing that goes on. I'm doing it now. You can see all that going in now. Great effects you can get with this stuff. Give it a go for yourself. It takes a bit of practice, but you can get really, really great effects. Also, you've got to you've got to take it for granted that you're gonna to have to go back over certain things. Certain things you won't have to go back over. Certain things you certainly probably will. Uh, that's why on your on your fill. When you start doing just laying paint down, just you know, just do it for as long as you like. Really, I'm one of them people. I don't like chaos on a on a piece for too long. I want to see that it's coming together. Otherwise, I lose confidence quite quick. <clears throat> particularly if it's something I don't really like. Uh, the colourway that I'm using on this, I've used before a couple of times recently. You can see that I'm using a sort of uh, that sort of. The background pinky light, I'm using it as a reflected light on the characters as well, which helps me out and aesthetically it's quite pleasing as well. So that left hand uh, of the canvas is pretty much done now. I'm going to come back to it much later, drop some highlights on that fan near, near right at the end of the, the video, probably. Uh, but now it's all about getting these characters in. As I slowly work from left to right, um, what to say about this? It's tricky, this because it's detail and it's not very big. And the Molotovs are brilliant pens; they're really, really brilliant. But they're not super fine. You can't get a super fine version. And Poskas, you can only get a certain number of super fines. So I can't. I can't just sort of I can't just slap it all over, you know, I can't just slap on paint. I've got to be quite careful about it at this stage. Uh, which is not my preferred way of working a lot of the time. Because I like to um that's why working on a large <coughs> larger scale is much better a, a lot of time because you've got just a lot more room to manoeuvre, really. It's not as fiddly. Having said that, when you do fiddly bits and pieces, that's when you've got to go back over, catch your edges, all that sort of stuff. You know. Um, the beauty of using graphic black line 
to surround everything with and all that kind of thing is you you, you can keep on going back over and uh, again paint markers are brilliant for that I was mentioning recently alcohol markers are very unforgiving when it comes to laying down ink because if you get it wrong it's a darker colour you can't go over it again you're stuck with it whereas paint you can go back and uh, go back over it again I've got very wedded to using paint markers recently I've been really really enjoying it for that reason actually one of that one of the reasons is that another reason though is that the colour is very vivid uh, in a way that alcohol markers often aren't uh, you get a sort of very very vivid brightness in in paint markers this is a good example here so I go over this cute once I don't bother going over again one of the reasons it's a very light colour I'm going to put a blue in the background like you see there then I'm going to do a black outline on it so it's all going to pop so you're not really going to notice very much also I'm going to do um, a faded fill with a Sineo blow pen uh, which is a brilliant tool if uh, if you use blow pens and stuff or airbrush or anything like that there you go I'm using a bit for the background there just dropping tiny bits in there you go I'm putting the uh, put a nice sort of dark pink fill in that's gonna work very nicely again this is the beauty of paint you go back in pick out the lines beautiful that's the great thing about paint and I can go back over them bubbles I'm gonna do uh, a bit more signing a bit later to offer a massive great chunk of contrast uh, just over the top of them characters to delineate I could have just left it the way it was but I like to sort of um, like break the quadrants of a canvas up a little bit so I'm dropping a nice fat outline on there you see what I mean about the contrast there that black is so vivid and black it really pops out of you and uh, and when I drop the white outlines uh, out what's the word highlights that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> what the hell drop the uh, the white highlights on there as well and uh, and that will really jump off I've already done a drop shadow on it I'm gonna do bits of doodads and little whips and stuff as you can see dropped a bit of purple shading down at the bottom as well just give it a nice little uh, extra bit of blend all that there you go some nice whips in there and, uh, and the white highlights on there and uh, now this is what I'm talking about I'm just gonna put a bit of contrast between the two halves of the canvas really just a bit of flare up the top there and uh, I'm gonna darken that in a second you'll see I'm gonna darken it in you notice I'm going over them bubbles again easy with a paint marker so easy there you go nice black there just as a sort of just a sort of, you know, a bit, bit more flare there with a the lighter purple and uh, and really at this point we're nearly complete I'm just drop a C in there but um, but we're nearly done at this stage and uh, I'm just looking around for bits to, bits to do little bits of finishing what not but largely that's pretty much complete and I'm happy with that take a look at this <laughs> 